Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering network and packets. So in the last episode, we created keybinds, but when we click the button, it just sends something to the console. However, this only happens on the client. So if we want to tell the server something, we're going to need to send a packet. So in order to do that, we first need to create a network. And the kind of network we're going to be creating is a simple channel network. So let's right click on core and create a new package called dot network. Then let's create a class and I'm going to call this tutorial network. Now in here, we're going to create a public static final string and this is going to be our network version. And I'm just gonna set this to 0.1.0. .0. Every time we want to add a new packet to the network, we should increase this so that servers know that the network has changed. So now we can create a public static final simple channel and we're going to call this channel and we're going to set it equal to network registry dot new simple channel. And now we need to give it a resource location. So let's do a new resource location. Then we need to give it the namespace. So let's do tutorial mod dot mod ID and then the ID which we can just set to network. Next, we need three suppliers, the network protocol version, the client accepted versions and the server accepted versions. So for the first one, we're just going to supply our network version. And for this, we're going to check if the version equals our network version, like so. And then we can do the same thing for the server one, not just the client. And there we go, now we've created our simple channel. Next, we can create a public static void called init. And in here, we're going to register all the packets that we create. But first, let's register the tutorial network class. So under here, let's create a public void, call this common setup, and we're going to pass in a final FML common setup event. Let's use control shift O to import, and let's call this event. We're going to call this event, and we're going to press control shift O to import FML common setup event. And all we need to do in here is to call tutorial network dot initialize. Now we need to call this common setup function. And to do that up here, we can do bus dot add listener. And then we can call this colon colon common setup. Now we need to create a packet to register in the tutorial network. So under our network package, we're going to create a new package called message. And this is where we're going to keep all our packets. I'm just going to call this input message. And this is the packets that we're going to use to get the data from input events like the key and the action into the server. So first of all, let's just make an empty constructor so we can initialize this without any data. So here, if our key is pressed, we can also pass in some data into the input message. So I'm just going to pass in the key index, even though we already know that, just as an example. But if you're just making a keybind thing, you don't need to do this. So to pass in the int key value, we need to make another constructor with an int key. Let's actually give this a property, so let's do public int key. And then in here we can do this dot key is equal to key. Next we need our encode, decode, and handle functions. So let's do public static void encode. And this is going to take an input message, message, and a packet buffer, buffer. So let's do buffer dot write int. And then we can do message dot key. And we need to make sure we memorize the order in which we write the stuff here. So let's just copy this and paste it and rename this to decode. And instead we're going to return an input message and we don't need to even pass in a packet buffer. And let's make sure this is static. I'm going to return a new input message and we're going to pass in buffer dot read int as the key. And we want to make sure we read stuff in the same order as we write to it. So if I were to have like another int here and say this wasn't the key, this was like a value or something, we want to first read the key, then read the value in the same order that we write here. So finally, let's create a public static void handle. And this is also going to take the input message, message, but it's also going to take a supplier of network event dot context, and we're going to call this context. So let's open some brackets and import supplier from java.util.function. Now let's get the context. So let's do network event dot context, context, but we can't have this to be the same name. So let's just do context supplier is equal to context supplier dot get. And we're going to do context dot in q work and then we need to pass in a runnable so to do that we can do a supplier with a function inside it let's put a semicolon at the end of here 
and then afterwards we can do context.setPacketHandled to true. And now that we've done that, anything that we want to happen when our event is called, this time on the server, with our client data, for example the key, we can do that here. So the way we get stuff from the server is by getting the server player entity. And this is going to be our player. And that's going to be equal to context.getSender. And with this server player entity, we can get the world by doing player.world. And this is already going to be the server world. So this allows us to do anything inside the server. So for this example, I'm going to first give the player a diamond. So we're going to do add item stack to inventory. And we're going to create a new item stack with items dot diamond. So now when we press our key, we're going to give an item to the player's inventory. Another thing I'm going to do is set a block. So we're going to do world world is equal to player dot get world. And we're going to get the entity world. Let's use control shift O to import world. And now let's set a block. So let's do world dot set block state. And first we need to get the position. So I'm just going to set it at the player's position. So let's do player dot get position. However, this is going to set the block at the player's feet. So let's do dot down to set the block the player's standing on. And then we're going to set the block the player's standing on to a diamond block. So let's do blocks dot diamond block dot get default state. And there we go. So now when we click our key, we're going to give a diamond to the player's inventory and we're going to set a block state. So next we actually need to register. So in our tutorial network, let's go to the init and let's do channel dot register message. Then we need to pass in the index. So let's just do zero. Then we need to pass four things from the input message. So let's do input message dot class for the first one. And then we need to do input message dot encode, input message colon colon decode, and input message colon colon handle. And there we go. If we were to have another message, we could just copy this, paste it, and change this zero to a one, because that's the index at which we're registering it. So we need to have a unique one for each one, so we can just increment it each time. However, I'm going to delete this because I don't want to register the same packet twice. And now we need to call the packet. So back in our input event, instead of calling the key pressed, we're going to create our packet. So to do that, we're going to call tutorial network dot channel dot send to server. And then we need to pass in the message. So let's create a new input message. And then we just need to pass in the key. So I'm just going to pass in key. As I said, the key is actually useless, so let's do something with that key. In our input message, we can do system.out.println, and let's just print the key, so we can do message.key. So now we're going to give the player a diamond, set a diamond block at their feet, and print something from the server with the key that we pressed. So now we can actually start the game, and there we go. So now if I go into the game and press G, you can see I get a diamond, the block below me gets set to a diamond, and in the console we can see that the input message has set something to the chat. Thank you for watching, if you need any help, join the Discord, and I'll see you in the next episode.